Hello everyone, this is Jordan from AutoAid with another diagnostic video. Today we're going to be looking at a 2016 GMC Savannah 4.8 liter uh, with an intermittent ABS light. Well, the customer complaint with this vehicle is the ABS light comes on intermittently. Um, according to the customer, a new steering angle sensor was installed and the ABS light continues to come on after the steering angle sensor was replaced. Uh, according to the customer, the uh, light also comes on. Uh, if you clear the code, it'll come back as soon as you uh, turn the steering wheel. So first we're going to scan the vehicle for codes and upon scanning it we found a C0900 uh, control module power circuit high voltage and a C0710 uh, steering position signal uh, performance and they're both history codes. Um, I think we're going to ignore the high voltage code for right now um, they likely had a battery charger on this thing while they were trying to diagnose it and uh, set that code. So I think we're just going to focus on this C0710 code for now. So I'm not too sure exactly what that means. So let's just take a look at the code description here. So uh, for C0710, uh, symptom 17, the DTC descriptor states uh, steering position signal shape slash waveform failure and conditions for setting the DTC our phase A and phase B signal resistance values do not correlate to one another, or the calculated steering angle from the steering, steering wheel position sensor does not correlate with the steering angle calculated from the yaw rate. Um, so I'm not really sure what phase A and B signal is or, uh, or anything like that. So um, I think we should probably have a look at the circuit description and see exactly how this works. Um, there's a lot to digest there. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of break it down on the next screen. Um, into a couple simple points. So the EVCM uh, provides a five volt reference and ground to the steering angle sensor. Uh, and the EVCM receives three inputs from the steering angle sensor as well, uh, phase A, B, and C circuits. Uh, it also has an analog steering position monitor, which is uh, why we have the five volts and ground going there. It also has a, uh, a, another uh, signal circuit to go along with that five volts and uh, ground circuit. Um, so it uses these uh, uh, these two position sensors uh, to determine steering wheel position. Um, according to the code set criteria, the code sets when phase A and B don't uh, correlate and if the steering angle sensor doesn't match the steering angle sensor from the yaw rate sensor. Um, so as you're going around a corner, uh, the vehicle is able to determine um, if the steering position is correct uh, when compared against the yaw rate, because as you're turning a corner, the yaw rate's gonna change. So they compare steering uh, angle reading to the yaw rate and um, they have to correlate. Um, the, the analog steering position signal, as well as the three phase signals will need to be scoped in order to see uh, where the issue is and see if we can get to the bottom of it. So our first three circuits we're gonna scope here are our five volts, our um, ground circuit and our signal circuit here. All right, as you can see here, our steering angle sensor ground uh, appears to be okay. Our five volts is sitting at uh, right at five volts and our signal uh, appears to track good. Now, two and a half volts here um, or thereabouts, it looks like it's just below three volts, but um, between two and a half and three volts is uh, center. Um, and as I turn the steering wheel uh, to the right lock, it comes all the way down to about 0.5 volts. And then when I go all the way back to the left lock, uh, it goes up to about four and a half volts and then back to center, uh, two and a half volts. So it appears that the uh, analog signal or, or the analog uh, steering angle sensor is reading correctly. So I don't think we have an issue with that one. So just to recap, steering, the wheel lock to lock, the analog signal appears to look okay. Five volt reference and ground are also okay. So next, the three phase signals must be scoped. And these are our three phase signals here. Uh, we have, looks like a tan, a dark blue, and a yellow wire. When reading the circuit description for these, um, for these three phase circuits, uh, I, I was not able to find any of this information. That's why I have that big uh, point at the bottom. This info is not published. Um, the only reason we know this uh, is, is from experience and testing other vehicles. Um, and once we have other vehicles repaired, we kind of go in and take a look at readings to see what they should be. So um, on another vehicle that we were 
uh, working with, we found that the phase A and B switches, uh, as the steering wheel is turned, is supposed to toggle from zero to 12 volts. And phase C should be 12 volts with the wheel centered. And then it should drop, zero, uh, should drop to zero volts whenever the wheel is passed a quarter turn in either direction. Again, this info is not published. And this is very important, uh, in, in my opinion. You need to know how the circuit works and what the voltages are supposed to be on those circuits. And they just don't tell you. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully this helps someone in the future uh, when they're dealing with a van like this. <clears throat> uh, because this is very difficult info to come by. Uh, and the only reason we were able to figure it out is, uh, again, from, uh, from previous experience on another vehicle uh, like this. So with these voltage readings in mind, uh, let's take a look at the scope and see what we got going on there. So our red and green trace is phase A and B, and our blue trace is phase C. Um, the readings are taken while moving the wheel slightly left and right of center. Uh, so as you can see here, our uh, phase A and B appears to be okay, um, but our phase C is uh, sitting at zero volts. Now let's just go back to the other one here. So phase A and B are switching between zero and 12 volts when the wheel is turned, which is correct. And phase C should be 12 volts with the wheel centered. This is with the wheel centered right here where this big gap is. That's where I stopped. So I turned it uh, from left to right here and that's back to center. We're sitting at zero volts throughout the entire test. So that's, uh, that is not correct. We got an issue there. Just to recap, phase A and B look good. Phase C is showing at zero volts. With the wheel straight ahead, there should be 12 volts on that phase C circuit, and it should change to zero as the wheel is moved off center, which it was not doing. So, we've got a couple questions here. Is the wheel centered properly? Is the new steering angle sensor reading correctly? Uh, taking a look at data should be able to help us answer those questions uh, with the wheel position. Straight ahead, let's look at some steering data. So this is with the wheel position straight ahead. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, a reading of 28.6 degrees with the wheel straight ahead. So that doesn't look right, first of all. Getting the steering wheel angle data to PID to read zero required turning the wheel nearly a quarter turn to the left. Data and scope were monitored while turning the wheel back and forth from center to quarter turn left. So as we turn the steering wheel, you can see that the steering wheel angle changes. So if you can't see that here, it's right here where we read 28.6 degrees. As I uh, turn the uh, wheel to the left, it slowly comes down and starts reading around zero. And then back to center, reads 26.8. Now this is a scope shot while I'm doing that as well. Uh, blue trace is phase C, turning the wheel back and forth from center to quarter turn. So right here where it's uh, around zero is when the wheel is centered and about a quarter turn it starts reading 12 volts. Back to center, quarter turn again starts reading 12 volts. Now this should be reading 12 volts while it's centered uh, and it's not, it's reading zero volts while it's centered. Now, the analog sensor is reading the straight ahead position correctly, but the digital angle sensor is not. Uh, this failure does not match the code set criteria. So if we go back and take a look at the code set criteria, it states that this code sets when phase A and B do not correlate, or when the steering angle position does not match the steering angle position from the yaw rate sensor. Well, as you can see there, our phase A and B are correlating fine and uh, reading okay. Um, and this code is able to set in the service bay by turning the wheel back and forth. Um, when you're turning the wheel back and forth sitting in the service bay, there should be no yaw rate uh, input into the VCM. So there's, there's no yaw rate for the VCM to compare to this phase C steering position. Um, so this code is setting some other way and we're gonna have to figure out how. One thing I noticed is the code description states steering position signal shape slash waveform failure. Now, what we suspect is happening with this vehicle, and this is just speculation, uh, because again, this is not published at all, um, is we suspect that the vehicle is comparing the digital signals, which is the bad signal, to the analog signal, which is the good signal, and was able to detect an issue with the phase C waveform. Um, again, this, this is just speculation, uh, but this is what we suspect because 
uh, those two other code set criteria is not matching our failure. The customer confirmed that the new steering angle sensor that they put in was an aftermarket unit and it was installed properly. Um, apparently there's a locking tab in this uh, steering angle sensor and you are not able to remove the locking tab until it is installed properly. Um, so that's kind of fail safe to make sure that, the, that these technicians are uh, installing this, uh, this unit correctly. So after speaking with the customer, uh, we've determined that the new steering angle sensor they got was defective. Upon installing a new OE sensor, phase A and B waveform remained unchanged, but the phase C waveform was now reading correctly. So in the end, this vehicle required a new OE sensor. The aftermarket sensor was defective. 